The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. Good morning. One of the uh, wonderful challenges of fall preaching for a rector is, of course, we are in the midst of stewardship season. And um, after all these years, and I've had different programs and campaigns I've been really excited about. I was really excited about New Consecration Sunday when we did that several years ago. Um, we also uh, did uh, another one on uh, community giving and involvement that I was very excited about. I have to confess, and Bev's back there, she's our stewardship chair as well as our warden. This is one of the most um, fulfilling and exciting stewardship campaigns I've experienced. I don't know what your experience is so far, but I'm having a great time. And the core of this is more than enough. This is the theme of our stewardship campaign this year, more than enough. The idea that like uh, five loaves and two fish being, being shared among 5,000 men and everyone else, bit of a sexist tip in the Bible, you hear the story of how in the presence of Christ, we as the people who follow as disciples, we who are the body of Christ and apostles sent out to proclaim good news to the world, we are given more than enough. And in an era when scarcity can take hold of us so profoundly that we feel paralyzed and terrified, and particularly in this very economic moment when we hear the, the whisperings of the word recession hanging over us, we need to hear that message of abundance more than enough. And you might argue with me saying, you know, Father, I'm not sure about that. Um, you know, I'm, and Laura and I are in the same place, by the way. You know, our retirement accounts took a dive. I mean, you know, and I always say to my wife, don't, don't worry, honey, we buy to hold, we buy to hold. Or you may say, I'm on a fixed income. It's not about the actual dollars, and it really isn't. It's about our engagement with and commitment to the good news of God in Christ. And when we are in that space, we really do find ourselves experiencing that we have more than enough. We have more than enough talent to give. We have more than enough time to give. And ultimately, we also have more than enough wealth to offer to God, to the work of the kingdom at hand. We hear in the words of Paul to Timothy, you know, you've had this gift of this faith from the time you were a child. And you have the, the resources you need. And Timothy was someone that Paul deeply trusted and entrusted a gift of the good news to. When Paul could no longer preach because he was in chains being commuted to Rome, he was in prison. He was writing to Timothy to give him encouragement so that he would have more than enough energy, confidence, grace to continue to preach the good word that had been given to him. In the same way, we hear about this widow in this parable that Jesus teaches the disciples. He taught them this so that they would not lose heart, but continue to strive. And tells the story of an unjust judge and a widow who persisted in seeking justice. And it would be so easy to get caught in the marrow of struggle 
and scarcity and hunger to assume that it's because of a scarcity of justice that this widow was so ardent. But instead, I ask you to look from her perspective. She's not going to stop until she obtains more than enough justice, not just for herself, but for others. Our assiduous care of the grace of Christ cracks us open so that we can no longer say that a little bit is enough. A little bit of love is not enough, for we have more than enough to share. A little bit of grace is not enough because we have more than enough to share. A little bit of concern is not enough because we have more than enough to share. Ultimately, even a little bit of justice is not enough. We have more than enough to share. One of the things I adore about being rector here at St. Peter's and being a part of the Diocese of New Jersey, in all the travels I've done in the past 12 years, and experiencing also the locality here in this place, the depth of generosity is more than enough to address the needs of the local community. There's a church down in Pleasantville where they built a high tunnel and created a small holding farm that provides for their drive-through food pantry more than enough fresh vegetables for their community. Literally, they can harvest right there and hand people vegetables fresh from the garden to take home and cook on top of the government food that has been donated to them. Here at St. Peter's, we continue to offer more than enough. We don't just operate one food pantry, we do two. And we have two distinct populations that access that need. There are the folks that go to Alice's Cup and get fed, and then on top of that, there are the folks that come to the Mini Mart food pantry on Wednesday night to get a supper and to take food home to cook. And it's two different communities that are being served. More than enough. We forget so often because we are compartmentalized in society that everything we do isn't enough. When instead we have to remember that when we come together in community, we band together in grace, we become persistent even as the widow was persistent, we have more than enough. God is deeply invested in that abundance. And it's important for us to hear that good news. When Jeremiah has been tasked with preaching exile and loss and grief and displacement and disruption and dislocation and dissonance to the people of Israel and Judah because they are going off into exile in Babylon. He ends his letter and his lamentations with words of hope. And I know it might not sound like hope when, when Katie was reading it today, you know, that it will no longer be the case that the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. And instead, if you bite into a sour grape, your teeth will be set on edge. That doesn't sound like particular good news, does it? Have you guys had enough coffee? I want to make sure it's good. Ian, still with me? Good. What God is doing is God is breaking the generational cycle of sin and guilt and proving to us again that God has more than enough forgiveness and love for us all. More than enough is not an asset reserved to us. It is something that pours over from God's love. No vessel can contain it. It overwhelms us with its abundance. It, it literally undoes us with its grace. As we walk through the gospel of Luke in this particular year of the lectionary cycle, one phrase keeps hitting me more and more over and over again. When Jesus is talking about how much God loves, how much God forgives, how much God provides, every story he tells is one of human scale. And then he turns it around and says, and how much more will God offer to us and through us to the world? We are in a season in which we are asserting again that God gives us more than enough. And we are returning those blessings to God in community and in service and ultimately in grace. We are so blessed here in this moment. We have been given so much to share, to offer, 
to render up, not just for the benefit of this tiny community that is Spotswood or this little church perched on a hill that is St. Peter's, but instead to be that light shining in the darkness, like a city on a hill, like a lamp on a lampstand, giving illumination to the world and proving once again that when God's love is present, the overwhelming love and grace that pours forth is enough to offer surfeit and recovery and hope and safety and care and justice so that there is more than enough. We've all been thirsty. We've all been hungry. We all know what it's like to feel broken and worn down and tired. And it is this very reality that we share in knowledge and fullness that we can also turn around then and acknowledge that it is God who gives us rest, God who gives us enough courage, God who gives us enough strength, God who gives us the rest we need so that we can recover and renew and serve. And for that, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we give glory to God and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Please rise and I invite you to join me with an affirmation of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We